And actually calming the gut, looking after the gut is so key in all of this. Um, and, um, and people won't necessarily see an improvement immediately. So you have to be very patient with in this game. Um, when it comes to the, um, the people who have reacted very badly to the injections, they have a very similar um, similar kind of reaction uh, to the long COVID patients. Um, and it's, it, it seems that it's the spike protein that is particularly offensive and the spike protein is particularly toxic. And we now know that it's very, very toxic um, and that it's causing it causes filaments to form in the bloodstream with clotting problems. It causes, so we've got seeing a lot more heart attack strokes, pulmonary emboli. It's causing, it just destroys the T lymphocytes. So it's causing immunosuppression um, and people are therefore more susceptible to infections and find it harder to shake them off. Um, T lymphocytes are also very important in clearing out precancerous cells. Um, or cells that have gone a little dodgy. Uh, and then we've got, it also upregulates 17 cancer causing genes and downregulates three cancer protective genes. So this is of major concern to all of us, um, especially when you consider that we are just continuously making this in our bodies and they, we don't know how much we're going to make and we don't know for how long. Um, but we are seeing some of the consequences, I think, of that toxicity now in people. And um, it's very important to try and clear it out. And there is a, there is an Italian group called the Zero Spike Project. And I would really recommend that everybody has a look at this. If you look at zerospike.org forward slash en, you'll get the English website. So zerospike.org forward slash en. And that uh, is an excellent website. It's got lots of information on there. It's got um, it's got videos. It's got articles written by scientists and doctors and pathologists and um, very, very enlightening kind of website. And these guys, um, they developed something called Augmented NAC. Now, the Augmented NAC... Uh, in the UK, we can order it from augmentednac.com, um, but I don't know if that's the same. There might be a different website for you in the US. I'm not sure. Um, but if you emailed the Italian group, they would let you know. Um, and it's fascinating. What they did was they found that um, they found that the if they took ordinary NAC, which is an acetylcysteine, it's the precursor to glutathione. It's very good at, um, it's, it's very good for the body. Uh, it's helpful in the brain, in the heart, in the lungs, in the um, liver and etc. So it's, it's a good stuff to take anyway. But when they mixed it with, with um, the spike protein under the electron microscope, they could see that it denatured about up to 15% on average of the spike protein was denatured by the NAC. And then the liver could methylate it and get rid of it, which is good news. But when they did something very special to the NAC and they augmented it, which is all to do with quantum physics, um, they actually made it able to uh, denature 99.8% of the um, spike, which is incredible. They, it can't, can't do that to the spike that's in intracellular inside the cells or in the organs, but anything that's in the bloodstream, which is where it's causing the filaments to form and so on, it can clear it out. So they've done this for over 10,000 Italians over the last year, and they've been studying them. Um, and so now they're ready to roll this out across the UK, across the world globally. And certainly um, as of the last three or four weeks, it's been available in the US um, and it's been available in the UK for the last two weeks. Um, wow. And, yeah. Can you, can you give me the information for that as well? And I'll link that in the description mm -hmm. so everyone could see that. Absolutely. And okay. actually they sent me a whole load of data. I can, I'm, I'm sure I'll ask them if I can share it with you. I'm sure they'd be very happy for you to see their data. Um, it's very exciting. Uh, I, I've, I feel so, um, 
um, enlightened, you know, I feel not enlightened, that's the wrong word, sorry. I feel so uh, encouraged by this development because we've been looking for uh, antidotes and how to help the body cope with this um, toxicity. And, um, and this seems to be a, a real answer. And so far, I've heard of reports of people um, in the in America who've gone on it who have felt so much better. Their brain fog clears, they've got more energy, their pain goes down, um, they feel so much better. And I have a feeling that the spike is a constant trigger for patients with MCAS, um, uh, for sure. And uh, so we can only get them well for to up to a certain level. And then because they're still making the spike and they're still, if they still got it, they, it aggravates their MCAS. So I'm really keen in getting rid of it for people, get for them to get it out. People can have a detoxification kind of reaction um, because, it, and it just shows it's working basically. So um, some people have said that they felt exhausted for six hours just as their right. poor was going, wow, I've got to deal with all this spike <laughs> and clear it out. Um, and, and then they felt fine. They rallied after that, you know, but uh, there have been so many positive reports. It's really encouraging. So I encourage right. all, all of my patients to go on it now. So the spike, the spike protein doesn't eliminate on its own after a while. Like it just keeps. Do you know what, Scott? We don't know. Okay. We do know that AZ, which was the one that's now gone off the market and which many of us had in the UK. Right. Um, AZ, um, we know that that changes the DNA permanently. Hmm. So we're gonna make, you know, we're going to make the spike protein forever until we can repair the DNA, until right. we know how to do that. But um, so that's why I would, I'm saying to my patients, you know, take one three times a day for three months and then take one a day ongoing because we, you know, and also if you should come across any spike, it will denature it quickly. So that should stop you catching any further episodes of the infection. And um, so, yes, yeah, so this is, I know it's available in the U S now I'll, I'll find out for you and let you know the um, website that people can order it from. Um, but I would, I think we, we literally all should do this because we're all sitting on a time bomb. Yeah. So would you say that long haul is it kind of like, you know, it's kind of similar to getting the, the vaccine itself, like long haul, um, you, you saw that spike protein in you from, from the virus itself. Yes. Um, and how is that related to mast cell activation? Is is long haul basically just MCAS, you know, yeah. disguised, or or what would you say to that? Well, it's, it's a, that's an interesting question, and and that was the one question I wanted to answer when I first thought about the long COVID patients having MCAS, and um and so I opened my clinic for two reasons. One was because I had uh, intellectual curiosity. And I thought, you know, have these patients got undiagnosed, untreated MCAS that's just been really exacerbated by this, this particular virus? Um, just like the patients with ME get aggravated by a virus, but, um, you know, because they've got MCAS too in my book, but, um, or, or has it exacerbated MCAS, you know, has it caused MCAS in people? Which of those is happening? So when I, and, and I felt, so I had this intellectual curiosity but I also felt morally obliged to open the clinic because I thought no one was helping them you know I couldn't hear of any help that these people were getting and they were opening NHS clinics but in the NHS clinics they told them to rest you know they said rest and pace yourself <laughs> and the nice, the nice guidelines said um tell them to rest and to make a list of all their symptoms that was the treatment and it's like these people can't go back to work and can't get on with their lives and look after their children and, and, and their elderly parents and all the things they have to do if they're feeling so rotten and they're just told to rest, you know. So um, so I felt morally obliged to open the clinic because I thought I can I, I think I can help these people, you know, by treating them as if they've got MCAS. And the interesting thing was, I would say 99% of my patients have got previously undiagnosed, untreated MCAS. So when you take the history they have got history of IBS. Doesn't mean they were particularly unwell with it, you know, but they all have got signs and symptoms to suggest that they actually had MCAS prior to the infection. 
and the infection has just pushed all the right buttons and ramped it right up for them um, and brought in uh, on all of their symptoms, plus, plus, plus more, you know, um, uh, par excellence, because we, we do know that the, the um, mast cells, the ACE2 receptor on the mast cell is particularly good at taking in the spike uh, and the virus. So um, that has, they've been super, super aggravated, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think that uh, the long COVID patients are MCAS patients predominantly, and they all responded really well to treatment, to the same treatment. Um, and um, some responded incredibly quickly, you know, like within the first week, they started to feel very much better and were better by the six week checkup or the two, three month checkup. They were like, I'm, I'm really so much better now. I'm back to work. I'm doing this and doing that. Um, others took a bit longer but they were generally the ones who had more symptoms prior to the infection. Um, I had two who I couldn't find any MCAS kind of previous history at all for. So I think for them, it was just bad luck, you know, that it had just really, their bodies had re overreacted and, uh, and calming them down was particularly easy. They were, they responded very, very quickly to treatment. Um, and then they were, they were fine within six weeks. They were absolutely fine. Back to normal, if not quicker, one lady, 10 days. And yeah. wow, okay. Having and, been and, Ill, you know, she'd been ill for 14 months. And 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 are you using for the primary treatments that you listed earlier, like H1, H2 blockers, gremlin sodium, yeah, um, those type of treatments. Okay, I see. And and for a lot of people, what is the, sort of the average time of uh that you start to see some improvements or or maybe even see a complete resolution? Can you give sort of a time frame on on average? I mean, I, I see my patients and then um, initially I was seeing them six weeks after the initial consultation and they, were, they would all be moving in the right direction. And as I say, one or two would be really very much better. Um, I then see them at three months and usually by then we've got a significant improvement. But there are one or two who it's really difficult, especially the ones who are post-injection um, I've got one or two who are pretty sickly, actually, really difficult to, to help. Um, but we're going to keep plodding on. And I think that this augmented NAC is going to be critical for them because I think that the spike is just constantly keeping them sick. Um, and if we can clear that out. Now, we, we do know that, you know, the spike from the virus is also bad, uh, but it's not quite as toxic and there isn't quite as much of it as the one from the um, from the injections. So, and we also know that people who've had the injections shed um, for six, up to six months after they inject, have the injection. So, you know, even somebody who hasn't had any of the injections could have been affected by them. Um, so I, I think it's important for us to think about detoxing, get, getting rid of, getting rid of it from as many people as possible, for as many people as possible. Um, as quickly as we can. We know it causes infertility. We know it causes more than a doubling of miscarriages. We know it causes an increase in stillborn babies. This was all shown in the in the studies. I know that they they did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I saw they have like a, a glutathione, glutathione deficiency as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of issues going on there. It seems a lot of issues. We know it yeah. interferes with at least 40 chemical processes in the body um clinic, you know pathways in the body are disrupted um it's yeah it's, it's very very poisonous 